Let's go. Port 101 practical. All right. We have a flag at the end. Let's read. Perhaps aptly titled by their name, ports are an essential point in which data can be exchanged. Think of a harbor and port. Ships wishing to dock at the harbor will have to go to a port compatible with the dimensions and the facilities located on the ship. When the ship lines up, it will connect to a port at the harbor. Take for instance that the cruise line, a cruise liner cannot dock at the port made for a ship for a fishing ves vessel, and vice versa. Um, these ports enforce what can park and where. If it isn't compatible, it cannot park here. Networking devices also use ports to enforce strict rules when communicating with, an, an, with one another. When a connection has been established, recalling from the OSI model room, any data sent or received by a device will be sent through these ports. In computing, ports are numerical values from zero to the entire range, like 65,535. 65, because ports can range from anywhere between 0 to 65,535, there quickly runs the risk of losing track of what applications is using what port. A busy harbor is, harbor is chaos. Thankfully, we associate application software and behavior with a standard set of rules. For example, by enforcing that any web browser data is sent over port 80, software developers can design a web browser such as Google Chrome or Firefox to interpret the data the same way as one another. This means that all web browsers now share one common rule. Data is sent over port 80. How the browsers look, feel and easy to use is up to the designer of the user's decision. Yes. While the standard rule for web data is port 80, a few other ports uh, protocols have also uh, been allocated a standard rule. Any port that is, re that is within 0 and 1000, this is also the range that Nmap scans if you don't uh, specify uh, ranges. The first 1000 ports, any port that is within 0 and 1024 is known as a common port. Let's explore some of these other protocols. And we have some six of the oh, six of some common ports, actually, yes, six with a little description. Uh, file transfer protocol FTP on port 21. This protocol is used by a file sharing application built on a client server model. Meaning you can download files from a central location. The secure shell SSH 22 port. This protocol is used to securely log into systems via text based interface for management. This is a text based interface is a command line. Uh, port 80, it's HTTP, we learned about this, is the port used for uh, web pages. The protocol powers the www worldwide web. Your browser uses this to download text, images and videos of web pages, which is exactly the World Wide Web. It's just the collection of web pages. HTTPS is exactly HTTP, but with a, a secure encryption. Right, the data sent via this protocol is encrypted. Uh, we have the SMB on port 445. This protocol is similar to the file protocol, this one, file transfer protocol. However, as well as files, SMB allows you to share devices like printers. RDP3389, this protocol is secure. Uh, is a secure means of logging into a system using a virtual desktop interface. So this is the GUI, as opposed to a text limitation of the SSH protocol, right? SSH protocol is text-based, text right? Use the terminal uh, and the shell. 
and the RDP is basically the GUI. Yeah. Okay. We have only briefly covered the more common protocols in cybersecurity. You can find the first 1004. Let me see what is this. Uh, all right. These two links will be perfect. I will put these links in the description of my of this video. What is worth noting uh, here is that these protocols only follow the standard dish. So this means that is you can administer applications that interact with this protocol on a different port. Yeah, this is really important, but don't you worry. The basics, the basic um, certifications in security, trainings, labs, whatever you bump into, most of the times you will see the services on their default ports. It's just good information to know that ports can also, uh, services can also be hosted on different ports, different than the default ports they run on. Uh, all right, this is uh, just uh, running a web server on, this is an example, running a web server on 8080 instead of 80 standard ports. 8080 is basically the, por the proxy, if we go here, Let me search real quick for 8080. HTTP proxy, common web proxy server, it's 80. But we learned that this is the default web server pro uh, port. But 8080 is the HTTP proxy. You will see it a lot when we will use um, burp and zap or wasp. Cool. Note, however, applications will pressure that the standard is being followed so you will have to provide the colon along with the port number practical challenge open the site attached to this task and connect to the IP address 8888888888 on port 1234 and you will receive a flag that's it let's see that's it IP address 8888 Oh, it's using it's it's using netcat on port one two three four. It's using netcat. If we go to netcat, I see now documentation. I think it will be much better. It will be better to let me see some websites in here it will be okay but let's go here um netcat is a simple unix utility which reads and writes data across network connections using tcp or udp protocols it is designed to be a reliable back-end tool that can be used directly or easily driven by other programs and scripts at the same time, it is a feature-rich network debugging and exploration tool uh, since it can create almost any kind of connection you would need and has several interesting built-in capabilities. Netcat on Air or NC, as the original program was named, should have been supplied long ago as another one of those cryptic but standard Unix tools. We are not going further into this because we'll learn about Netcat with TryHackMe. Connection received. Okay. You connected to a port. Submit. Basically, awesome. 